Hey everyone, and welcome to this quick introductory tutorial on the Omniverse Paint Tool extension for Omniverse Kit-based apps. This extension allows us to quickly and easily paint complex 3D meshes onto the surface of other 3D meshes. From grass and fallen leaves to bushes and shrubs, mesh painting accelerates and simplifies what would normally take hours of manual placement and manipulation. Best of all, because of Omniverse's robust, optimized, and beautiful path traced renderer, you can now paint an absurd number of meshes on a single GPU. I mean, look at this grass. Amazing. And like, none of this is faked. Man, that's a lot of polys to render. But as you can see, even with my eight year old system and a single RTX card, we are still at near real time. Anyhow, I digress. Let's get back to it. All right, in this tutorial, I'll be using Omniverse Create. However, any Omniverse app supporting this extension will work similarly. Also, this tutorial is not content relevant. I will be using this ArcViz scene I threw together to demonstrate, but a scene with some boxes and a ground plane would be fine for following along. Okay, the first thing we need to do is make sure our Paint Tool extension is active. To do this, let's go Windows, Extensions, and then let's search for Paint Tool in the search bar. Next, select the Paint Tool, and click Enable. If you like, select Auto Load to ensure it gets automatically loaded whenever your app starts in the future. Awesome, we should be all good to go now. Okay, let's close up our Extension Manager and begin. Okay, cool. Our Paint Tool is loaded and we are all set to paint. Now, to open the Paint Panel, let's go Window, Paint. Your Paint Panel should now appear in the upper right next to the Layer and Stage tabs. Though this is a perfectly acceptable place to keep the panel, I prefer to move it somewhere so I can see the stage and the paint tool simultaneously. To do this, I'm just going to tear off the tab by click dragging it to the right side of the main window and letting go. Nice, I like that a little bit better, great. All right, on top of the paint panel, there are two buttons. The library stores custom and pre-made brushes, while settings allow us to edit our currently selected brush. To get painting quickly, the default brush will paint cubes, but cubes are boring, so let's spice it up a bit. To do this, we will select the paint library, then select the leaves brush. Great. Now, if we switch over to settings, we should see that our brush is populated with assets, which means that our library brush has loaded successfully. Excellent. Now, in order to paint with our brush, we need to select the paint tool in the top left of the settings section. When you do, you will notice that the apply to is set to all. What this means is that any mesh is applicable for painting. And it is that way because we never selected an asset before selecting the paintbrush. So let's go ahead and unselect our paintbrush. Great. Now, in the stage or in the viewport, select an asset you wish to paint on. Then select the paintbrush. Notice that the Apply To now says Selected. We will now only be able to paint on the selected mesh. Let's give it a try. Using our mouse, let's now click and drag our paintbrush over our selected surface. As we can see, the leaves are painting down nicely. If we wish, we can adjust our brush size by simply increasing or decreasing in the settings. You will notice that the ring around our brush is adjusted accordingly and helps give some sense of where our paintbrush will paint. Now, though this is pretty good, I think I'm going to want some nice dense clumps. In order to do this, we will have to tinker some with our settings. First off, we will likely want to increase our actual density. This is how many assets we would like to paint with each stamp of the brush. Stamps happen when we click or drag our paintbrush. Lowering the stamp distance here will make the paint stamps happen more closely together, and vice versa. Now, as I mentioned, density dictates how many we want to stamp. However, this is countered by object padding. Padding is the closest distance a painted asset can be to another painted asset. Because of this, even if we have a very high density, the padding may disallow the requested density. This can be extremely useful if you wish for sparse spacing. Trees, for example, don't grow on top of each other, and we would want a rather high value. On other things like leaves, we will want lots and lots of overlap, and a negative value will allow for this. Okay, with all that said, let's set our density to 300, our object padding to negative 10, and let's just click around where we want more clumps. Now, as I move over to my grass, you will notice that because I have already painted grass here, when the leaves get painted on, they're actually beneath the grass. This is where a little bit of vertical offset should work the charm. So back in our settings, let's go ahead and enter a positive value of around eight and see what we get. Wow, 
Wow, lucky me, looks perfect. Okay, as you can see, vertical offset can certainly be very handy. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what this brush can do, let's go ahead and make our own brush. To do this, let's go ahead and click on the plus symbol and give our brush the name Bush Brush, as I need some bushes for painting in some shrubs along the side of this house. Once entered, press OK. Notice that the assets used to populate our leaf brush are now gone. What this means is that our new brush has been created and we just need to add some assets. To add an asset, all we need to do is click on the Add Assets button and then select the folder icon. This will open a dialog asking for a USD file as an input. Let's navigate to Localhost, NVIDIA, Assets, Vegetation, and finally Shrubs. Now, let's pick a nice bush. I think I'll choose this nice burning bush to start. Okay, now our brush is populated with an asset. Let's repeat that process till we have four bushes in our list. Great. Okay, if we use our brush now, we should find that all four brushes populate about equally and randomly. If we wish to prioritize a specific asset over others, we can use the asset bias property. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and lower the values of all the assets but the burning bush. Now, our burning bush comes up far more commonly than the others. Okay, since our brush is now much more robust, let's go ahead and save it. Select the blue Save icon to save your adjustments. Excellent. Now, if we jump over to the library, you'll see that it's also stored there, so you can select it later. Okay, so we really don't have much left to cover, but I do wish to explain a little bit about the erase brush. If you notice, it too is called a brush and works identically to our paintbrush, except that it removes brushed assets. Also note that the erase brush only erases assets that it has in its list. This makes it possible for me to erase my leaves or bushes while leaving my grass unaffected. Very convenient. Okay, so let's try it. First, I'll grab my erase brush and erase out some of these bushes that I added. As you can see, it is thinning out the bushes as we expect. However, it is leaving behind my grass and my leaves. Perfect. Now, let's say you want to remove a specific asset with the erase tool, but don't have it loaded in a saved brush. For this situation, we have a very handy sample tool. Let's test this by selecting plus for a new brush. Okay, so no assets are in this brush. And if we use the erase brush, it deletes nothing as it has no matching assets to remove. To remedy this, we can select this eyedropper, then select one of our instanced assets, for this case, I'll grab the burning bush again, and when I erase, the burning bush gets erased. Nice, huh? Okay, so the last thing I'd like to discuss is the flood tool. This tool is quite simply a cover or remove everything button. The use of it is rather easy. First, we select the mesh, then we select the brush, then we select the paintbrush, and finally we click flood. As you can see, my driveway is now evenly flooded with leaves. Pretty awesome, huh? Now, we can reverse that effect by using the Erase tool, then pressing Flood. As we can see, our assets are now all cleared from the driveway. Okay, so that about covers all the basics and usage of the Paint tool. From here, I think you should be able to start tinkering. I know for myself, this tool fills some pretty serious holes in my workflow, and hopefully it does for you too. Thank you so very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Omniverse tutorial. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now.